What's up guys, welcome back for another video, uh, welcome to Minko's Corner once again. Uh, first of all, thank you to everybody who's been on my channel for all the comments, all the likes. We're already 40, uh, 60 more to go or 10 more to go if you depending on the goals, but it is incredible. 40 people subscribed, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy this, uh, my channel. Um, this is the last video guys. The last video of the epic series... Um, for Napoleon, uh, this was an incredible journey. I learned a lot, even though I already watched the series beforehand. Uh, making a reaction, of, uh, a reaction of it, sort of uh, helped me along in terms of uh, memorizing, uh, memorizing the knowledge. Whereas if you just watch it on your own, uh, it's a little bit more difficult. At least, not so much difficult, but it's sort of different. Because here I explain, I memorize, you know, I talk it through. And, uh, now, what we, uh, today's the day, man, you know, last day, Battle of Waterloo, 1815, you know, last time Napoleon was uh, banished to Alba, and now, you know, he's coming back, you know, and then he's going to get re-banished to San Elena, you know, <laughs> in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, but let's watch this. April 1814. For ten years, one man has dominated Europe. Napoleon Bonaparte, Emperor of the French. Under his military genius, France conquered an empire that spanned the continent. But finally, he has been defeated by a grand coalition of his enemies. Napoleon is forced to abdicate and exiled to the tiny island of Elba. While the Bourbon monarchy is restored to France in the corpulent form of Louis XVIII. But rumors soon reach Napoleon that France would welcome his return. The French people have little love for the monarchy or its hangers on, the very people whose excesses led to the French Revolution 25 years before. He also learns that at the Congress of Vienna, his enemies are locked in bitter dispute over the future of Europe. Napoleon decides to act. Ah, you After see just Napoleon ten months in, in the exile, background? he returns to France, where the troops sent to arrest him rally to his cause instead. Most of France soon follows suit. Jesus Christ. But in Vienna, the coalition immediately put their differences to one side. They declare Napoleon an outlaw and mobilize their forces for war. You know, the guy gets banished. You know, the, the French people turn against him. The guy comes back, like, I don't know how much time, like, uh, is it a month later or a year later? He comes back, people are like, you know, they send an army to arrest him. The army comes, the guy's like, hi, guys. And they're, everybody's like, and, you know, they turn. <laughs> oh. Dude, this is insane. Napoleon the guy knows man. he must act boldly before the coalition launches a coordinated invasion of France. He counts on winning a quick victory and then negotiating peace from a position of strength. Yeah. He targets the coalition armies within easiest reach. Prince Blücher's Prussian army and the Duke of Wellington's Anglo-Allied army, both camped in Belgium. Napoleon's force is a match for either coalition army on its own, but he'll be heavily outnumbered if they're able to join forces. So he must keep them apart and defeat each in turn. Dude, the guy is insane. Great this is Napoleon's army crosses the frontier near Charleroi, intending to drive a wedge between the two coalition armies. The next day, Napoleon sends his left wing under Marshal Ney to take the crossroads at Quatre Bras. There, Ney clashes with Wellington's army, still scrambling into position. The Allied troops fight off a series of French attacks and just manage to hold their ground. 
The same day, Napoleon attacks Blücher's Prussian army with his main force near the village of Ligny. The battle is a brutal slugging match, but the French emerge triumphant. The 72-year-old Blücher leads a cavalry charge in person and has his horse killed under him. He only just escapes capture. The Prussian army retreats, but it is not broken. By the way, let's just point out, okay, the guy is charging with a cavalry at 72, like, and back then 72, you know, nowadays 72 is like, okay, you know, it's pretty normal. Back then 72, you're like in 150 in terms of age, Napoleon because... Napoleon sends his right wing under Marshal Grouchy the hygiene was to horrible. keep them on the run, and turns his own attention to Wellington's army. Yeah... The British general doesn't receive news of Blücher's defeat until the next morning, at which point he orders a retreat through heavy summer showers to a position eight miles south of Brussels, near the village of Waterloo. There, he receives a promise from Blücher that the Prussians will march to his aid the next morning. So Wellington decides to stand and fight. Wellington has chosen his battlefield with care. His troops are behind a gentle ridge, which will get... So basically, Wellington is the antithesis of Napoleon. He's basically the Napoleon of England, except he, at the end he won. You know, he's much, he's much less, you know, uh, involved in, uh, re, you know, uh, reshaping uh, the administrative uh, sort of arm of the, of the French country and other countries. I mean, the, the Napoleonic... Uh, the, administrative uh, impact it must be insane from what i've heard it's insane what he uh, was able to do his impact on on europe as a whole uh, it's pretty insane because you know his napoleonic code is what lives on uh, after his you know his, it's his legacy outside of his military genius and his you know his uh, his battles and you know that's one part of his legacy but the main part is uh, the Napoleonic code that lives on to this day. Give them some shelter from French cannon fire. His right flank is anchored on the farmhouse of Hougoumont, his centre on the farm of La Haye Sainte, and his left on the farm of Papillotte. Imagine if you were just normal farmer, just, you know, and chilling, and then you just see Napoleon marching by. <laughs> Wellington's men need every advantage they can get. The opposing armies are roughly equal in size, but his is a ragtag mix of British, Dutch, and German troops, many of whom have never seen combat before. Jesus Christ. They will have to hold off Napoleon's army of veterans until Prussian reinforcements arrive, or the battle, and probably the war, will be lost. How the, how the hell does he lose this? Against, you know, recruits? Let's see. Sunday, 18 June, 1850. What Sunday, happens? dawns bright and fair. Yeah. Napoleon has ordered Marshal Grouchy to pursue the Prussians and keep them busy, while he defeats Wellington's army at Waterloo and opens the road to Brussels. But it's Grouchy who gets pinned down, fighting the Prussian rearguard at Wavre. The main Prussian force eludes him and is already marching to Wellington's aid. At Waterloo, Napoleon delays his attack, waiting for the ground to dry, which will make movement easier for his troops. But the lost hours will later prove costly. The battle begins around 11 a.m. When Napoleon orders a feint against Wellington's right flank... It's insane how, you know, in, uh, in those battles, every single hour could mean defeat or victory, you know? He hopes Wellington will commit his reserves here, drawing them away from the center where the main blow will fall. But Hougoumont's British and German defenders cling on desperately throughout the day. At one point, the French force their way through the main gate, but it's shut behind them, and the intruders are all killed. Wellington Ouch. later calls it the decisive moment of the battle. Around noon, 80 French cannon open fire against the main Allied line. Most of Wellington's men are out of sight on the reverse slope, 
but many cannonballs still find their mark, smashing bloody holes in the Allied ranks. At 1.30 p.m., Napoleon sends in his infantry. The French columns are met by disciplined musket fire, and then charged by British heavy cavalry. The French attack disintegrates as Napoleon's men try to save themselves from the crushing hooves and flashing sabres. Scores of Frenchmen are ridden down, and two of their famous eagle standards are captured. But the British cavalry, exhilarated by success, charge too far. They become scattered, their horses blown. At their most vulnerable, they're countercharged by French cavalry and suffer terrible losses. Among the dead, Major General Sir William Ponsonby, commander of the Union Brigade. That's a name. Around 4 p.m., Marshal Ney thinks he sees the Allies begin to retreat and leads a mass cavalry charge to drive home the advantage. But Ney is wrong. The Allied infantry are ready, formed in hollow squares with bayonets fixed. The French cavalry can't break into these impregnable formations. They can only circle impotently until they retreat or are shot from the saddle. Ney's failure to support this attack with either infantry or artillery is a serious blunder. You can make those kinds of blunders Blue now, man. Blue oh. Prussians have begun to arrive. They capture the village of Plancenoit, threatening Napoleon's flank and forcing him to send reserves to recapture it. Around 6 p.m., French infantry finally capture the farmhouse of La Haye Sainte in the center of the battlefield. It allows the French to bring forward artillery and blast the Allied squares from close range. They can't miss the closely packed formations and casualties quickly mount. It begins to seem that if Wellington's army doesn't retreat, it will be killed where it stands. But the situation for Napoleon is also desperate. Yeah. The Prussians are arriving in force, and he's running out of men to throw against Wellington's army. So he turns to his ultimate reserve, the elite Imperial Guard, the most feared troops in Europe. <laughs> At 7.30 p.m., 3,000 of these battle-hardened veterans march past their emperor and across the corpse-strewn battlefield towards the Allied center. Wellington's redcoats rise to meet them and pour devastating volleys of musket fire into their ranks. When the Allies fix bayonets and prepare to charge, the Imperial Guard wavers and then retreats. Wellington, sensing victory, orders a general advance. About the same time, the Prussians recapture Plans Noir. News of the Imperial Guard's defeat and rumors of encirclement by the Prussians sweep through the French ranks. Panic breaks out and the French army flees the battlefield. Only Napoleon's old guard maintain their discipline mounting a heroic, but doomed, rearguard action. Jesus Christ! You're the... you know... Napoleon himself is forced to abandon his carriage and barely escapes the pursuing Prussian cavalry. Jesus Christ, this is a movie, man! The By the way, is... I'm sorry I'm stopping this, I'm no... Guys, I made a video earlier about the last duel, okay? Throughout the whole video I said, this is so dramatic, it should be made in a movie. Guess what? It was made in a movie. I'm a visionary, Jesus Christ. It's one. It was made in a movie. I don't remember their name, but it was the pretty popular movie. I think and the name is the last duel. Anyway. Congratulate each other outside Napoleon's former headquarters, an inn called La Belle Alliance. Yeah. Blücher thinks it's the perfect name for their shared victory, but Wellington prefers the more English-sounding Waterloo, where he has his own headquarters. Waterloo. Battle of Waterloo. 
Waterloo does sound English, but it's on like uh, 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 Holland, uh, Hollish, how do you say that? Netherlands soil. Waterloo was, in the words of the Duke of Wellington, a damned near run thing. It was also one of the bloodiest battles of the age. Of course. Around 50,000 men were killed or wounded. Jesus 23, Christ. 23,000 coalition casualties, 27,000 French. Due to an appalling shortage of medical care, many of the wounded were left lying on the battlefield for several days. Napoleon was utterly defeated. Unable to raise another army, he surrendered to the British. They transported him to a second exile on the tiny remote Atlantic yeah. island of St. Helena. The guy's dead. <laughs> Come His back now, no man. Escape. Yeah, I mean. He died there. If he came back from that, I'm going to France. I'm becoming a French citizen. This is. <laughs> Eight years later. Yeah. Waterloo marked the beginning of a period of relative peace in Europe. No shit. There were no wars between the great powers for 40 years. And the British would not fight on the continent for another 100 years. Nice. Until the summer of 1914. Yeah. When enough time passes that people forget their history, that's when the war starts. 40 years after the battle, a pioneer in the new art of photography captured these remarkable images. They're veterans of Napoleon's armies, by then all old men in their 70s and 80s. Among them, Sergeant Tanya of the Imperial Guard. Moray of the 2nd Regiment of Hussars. Dude, the hats are awesome. And I don't care what people the say. Second the guard hats lancers. are awesome. These faces are a tantalizing link to the dramatic events that shaped the course of history two centuries ago. Yeah. Charles, thank you. Uh, great. This is a whole. This whole series was linked up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I knew basically. You know, everybody knows what Waterloo means. It means the end, basically, for Napoleon. Uh, I'm surprised, I understand why he wasn't killed in terms of not uh, making it a precedent for, for monarchs uh, to be executed, I get it, but it's still weird, like, like the first time I sort of get it, but the second time that he wasn't killed, uh, uh, but yeah, crazy guy, man, and he's he's buried in, in France, he, uh, uh, when he died, uh, correct me here, if I'm wrong, but when he died, people thought that he was poisoned by the British. And he actually, he was buried in, in multiple coffins so that he never comes back. You know, the British were like, this is, come on, man, you know. But yeah, you know, Napoleon, his, his progeny, or at least his bloodline still survives, I think from uh, one of his brothers. And there is a, there is a, there is a potential heir to the throne in England, uh, in France. Well, there are multiple, you know, there's the, or, um, the, the, after the throne from the, the Orleans, you know, the, the Louis XIV, etc. And then there's the, uh, the, the Bonapartiste. So, and then there's the, um, there's another faction, I don't remember the name, but anyways, uh, this is really, this was an incredible series. Uh, type in the comments what, if there's any other series that I might, uh, uh, should I do after this one. I will do the Marshalls, promise. Uh, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to take a break after this from Napoleon for a little bit, like maybe a few days. And then, and then I'll come back with the Marshalls. Anyways, I will leave you guys. I've talked too much. Uh, see you guys next time. See ya.